If you're familiar with high-level conquests, you'll know that Silas is considered to be one of the best units in that game. He even has a strong argument for being ranked as the fourth best unit over Xander. But is he still as useful when he's fighting for Hoshido in Birthright? Well, yeah. He's probably the fourth best unit in this game, too. He's even better in Birthright than he is in Conquest. Most of your army in Birthright will never be able to replicate his best features. And it's not just his access to a horse, although that does help him a lot. Joining me to talk about Silas is Septi, one of the most knowledgeable people in the world about Fates, and one of the game's most accomplished challenge runners with a lot of fun stuff on her YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out. Let's get started. Silas is one of the earlier units to recruit in Birthright, recruiting after Chapter 7. He's the boss of Chapter 7, so he starts with his boss weapon ranks, which are C in Swords and D in Lances, which are notably higher than the ones you get in Conquest. The, the C Swords and D Lances is huge, actually, I believe. Of the non-scaling units, so removing Child units and yep. the My Castle units, he's tied for the second highest total wax in the game. Wow. In Chapter 7. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's tied with Scarlet. And he also has probably one of the better starting inventories in the game in the Steel Sword and the only Javelin that is available in the entirety of Birthright. That's your only physical 1-2 range lance in the game, so all of your lance units are going to be uh, fighting for that one. Uh, the Steel Sword is... I mean, it's a free Steel Sword. It's, it's not a bad weapon by any means, but the, the Javelin's pretty huge. Yeah. Hana really does like using the Steel Sword just to reach one-round thresholds. And Silas himself probably won't be using the Javelin just because there is more available access to the Kodachi in Birthright. The Javelin is probably going to be given to one of your Lancelot units like Hinoka, Oboro, Tsubaki, or Great Master Azam or something like that. Yeah, and Silas's starting sword rank is higher anyway, so he's already getting the plus one might from the Kodachi, whereas he isn't getting the head boost from Sea Lance's Javelin. So Silas overall has very solid stats for Birthrights just because he is an Anorian class in Cavalier. Cavalier notably giving good pair-up bonuses too with Strength, Defense, and Resistance. And if he promotes the Paladin, he also gives plus one move on pair-up, which a lot of units in Birthrights really like, especially the Defense boost, because surviving rounds of combat in Birthright is not always the easiest thing to do without extra supports, which you don't have very much of in the early game at least. Right, yeah, and, and it's modular too because you can promote to Great Knight as well and then get the massive plus four defense pair up if the unit you're using is like one of the more resistant ninjas or something. Oh, so he's yeah. got two good options for strong pair ups. And he probably has some of the best skills in the game from his base class of Cavalier. Elbow Room, which is just a flat plus three damage dealt when he's standing on a standard terrain tile, which is going to be most of the tiles in the game of Birthright, and Shelter, which allows him to effectively trade his action to allow another unit to take their action again in a single turn, which is really nice, especially when it's being used with Azura to enable a lot of faster plays. Yeah, uh, Shelter is definitely the best skill in the game. He's functionally just another dancer once he hits level 10, which is... Yeah. It's insane. And he and Jacob are the only people who have it naturally. Yes. So all shelter access comes from him, pretty much. He also has an insane personal skill in the form of Vow of Friendship. Now, in Birthright, this is a lot less useful than in Conquest, just because there's a lot more things that Korn will probably be doing that won't involve combats in early chapters. In Chapter 7, it's probably going to be difficult to get Corrin to half HP if she's using the Dragonstone. If she's using the Yato, then she isn't going to be countering things like Outlaws, and you're probably losing momentum in Chapter 7. In Chapter 8, Corrin is going to be recruiting Hinoka's group, and is probably going to spend the rest of the map trying to help one of your units in Hinoka's group level up. In Chapter 9, she is going to be recruiting Obro and Hinata, which are in a random corner of the map, away from all the enemies. So you're probably not going to get Corrin to less than half HP very often super early in the game, but it is still a very useful skill if you're able to get it to activate. Yeah, it, it's definitely not as good as it would be in Conquest. It does get the notable advantage, though, of that since Birthright enemies will attack for zero damage, you can put your half-health Corrin in Dragonstone mode, and she's still got 
usable combat, whereas yeah. in Conquest, that would not be the case if she's taking zero. Yeah. Beyond his use in combat, he's also a pretty good pair-up unit. He gives strength and speed at A support, and an extra point of strength and defense at S support, which is really good for, like, units that are struggling a little bit to one round and survive, like Hana, if you want to raise a Hana. Then Silas is probably one of her better pair-up partners. Yeah, his personal pair up's amazing. Uh, we already talked about how good Paladin and Great Knight pair up are. He also has Hero, which is one of yes. the very, very few classes that is a speed and defense pair up. Yes. So while that's not as universally applicable, there are units who want that, and it's so hard to come by. His pair up is extremely good, but the problem with using his pair up is that you're losing access to shelter during the turn that he's paired up for which is usually not ideal. <laughs> there is some super advanced movement tech that you can do with transferring in order to get the shelter action after a turn after he's been paired up, but it's generally not super applicable for normal play. For planet clears, it might be very useful, but eh. It's pretty niche. It's it's hard to even come up with situations where you can like plan it out. Yeah. But you don't technically lose it entirely, but yeah, for the most part, it's... Taking him off the field, and I mean, you really want to take the guy with effectively 14 strength off the field anyways? So. Yeah. <laughs> His defense stat is also pretty good in the context of birthrights when most of your units are in Hoshiden classes, which just don't really have very high base defense stats outside of like, Oni Savage, Oni Chieftain. So Silas is just going to be very useful in like, spudging big hits. Yeah, he, he pretty much picked the, the perfect stat spread for Birthright. Huge strength, huge defense, just enough speed. Yeah, and of course, his speed is probably going to be one of his bigger shortcomings compared to your other units coming at 8 at base. But in Birthright, speed is probably the easiest stat to fix, just because they hand you out so many good speed backpacks. Things like Hana or... Hinoka, which are two of the better candidates for his wife, are going to give a significant amount of speed pair up bonus. So that'll allow him to double pretty much any unit that he wants, especially if you take into account like a speed tonic and meal to reach the really high thresholds. Yeah, and, and the sea sword comes up as well there because once you get a practice katana, that is something that he can have to just basically hit any AS benchmark if necessary. It's fixable. Yeah. His resistance is also another one of his bigger shortcomings in the game, just because early in the game, there are quite a few mages that come in groups of like two or three sometimes. And if you send Silas into a group of them, then he does often take pretty big damage. Especially if he's not countering them, because he only has access to like the Javelin and the Kodachi. The early game mages in Birthrights can threaten him a bit, especially in like chapter 16, Pleasure Palace, where there is like an entire room of just mages that he could get really threatened by, so you probably don't want to be sending him super far ahead in that map without like significant support. Silas can't really do everything, but against physical units, he is probably one of your better options in the game. Yeah, his his res isn't the best, and there's like ways to fix it. Once you get him to see lances, I guess he can burn Naganata, but even that doesn't really do anything because then he's not countering. Yeah. So overall, that's probably just not his job, but you know, no one does everything unless you're Ryoma. He does have access to a lot of the good effective weapons and birthrights. I know by chapter 14, you have access to the... the sword has the axe splitter. The Lance has the Sword Catcher and the Beast Killer once you kill Benny for it. And if you're really crazy and bring him into Great Knight, he can get axes if you really want to use the uh, Pike Ruin Club or the Hammer. Yeah, he's also one of the few people who can use... You get a um, you get an Armor Slayer pretty on. Uh, oh, yes, it's, yeah. It's his joint chapter, right? Yeah. Um, and it's like only him, Hana, and Corin who can realistically use it. Yeah. And like you said, Corin's usually got other stuff to do, and Hana is Hana. Yeah. So he's one of the few good people to like be using it. So he has access to pretty much all of the. I guess Pike Ruin's probably a little tough to get on him, but yeah. Yeah, he's got all of the Norian effectives that you get pretty much. He's got some of the cool Hoshin effectives. He just has a lot of different choices because again because of those really good starting 
Having access to lances in particular is very good because in chapters 14 and 15, there are a lot of enemies that are going to be weak to the uh, sword catcher and the beast killer because those are the maps that have a lot of the triangles of Cavaliers and Paladins and the Wolfskin map where the sword catcher and the beast killer are just going to kill them in like one round very easily. So he yeah. has one of the easiest paths to a level 19 or 20 promotion alongside the other Lance users. Right, and um, the Wolfskin in Chapter 15 sides Keaton, I believe. None of them even have Beast Vein. Yes. So he is yeah. fine to just run in there with his huge defense and just Beast Killer them all. Yeah. Actually, getting him in range of the Wolfskin might be a bit of an issue just because there's a lot of terrain in that map, and he loses access to the skill Elbow Room if he's on terrain. But if you position him right with, like, pair-up movements, it shouldn't be at all an issue to get him to the point where he's easily one-rounding all the Wolfskin. Yeah, wouldn't even be surprised if he can get to... Well, I guess one-shot thresholds probably aren't realistic. But they're very slow, aren't they? They're, like, yeah. 14 if they have a rune and 18 if they have a stone so by chapter 15 you're probably at point and if you're really crazy and you're you trained subaki and early promoted subaki to level 5 using effective weapons in chapter 14 and 15 you might even be able to get like rally speed at that point if you're really crazy yeah i guess it's it's probably yeah it's definitely possible and level 15 azure is definitely possible by this point as well so like yeah there's things to be done so yeah silas has probably one of the best class sets that you can have in the game of birthright he has cavalier and mercenary of course we've already talked about how good elbow room and shelter are but what do you think of the other cavalier skills they're not the best defenders pretty good it's essentially plus one strength speed defense which is like yeah. it, it comes up he's definitely going to be fighting in guard stance a lot Aegis, Luna, and Armor Glow, I, I don't think they're ever going to call up for him. Yeah. I guess technically I could see Aegis mattering, but uh, if you're looking for a level 5 proc skill on Silas, I think there's a better option staring you in the face. And I think Aegis is uh, level 15 Paladin too, so that's... Oh really right, nuts. it's level 15. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's never happening. It's Luna that's yeah. level... Yeah, Luna is level 5 Great Knight and Luna sucks. So. Yeah, and... You probably aren't going to be bringing him past level 5 in any of the Cavalier classes anyways, because there is another skill that he really wants, and it is in Mercenary, and that is Soul. Soul is one of the most stacked skills in the game of Birthright, just because so much of the game is going to be played on enemy phase. Being able to heal in the middle of an enemy phase to really reduce the amount of effective bulk you need to stack on all units to survive is really good. Yeah, um, soul tanking is in a situation where you're fighting like tons of enemies at once and they're all doing a tiny little bit to your health, as is the case in most birthright maps. Soul just becomes incredible. If you're going for soul, you essentially get stronger posts with it for free, yes. which is another essentially unconditional plus three damage. Yeah. It doesn't activate on player phase, but such a small portion of your combat for one of your late game birthright carries is going to be on player phase anyways, that it doesn't really matter that much. So it gets him probably the best offensive skill in birthright, along yeah. with making the best defensive skill at the same time. Yeah. It's an incredible reclass option. The only issue is that training a hero does get kind of annoying. You lose access to a lot of the good lances that make training so easy and are forced to use. He'll probably have E axes at this point, so he's kind of stuck just using swords, and it's a little awkward. Well, um, hero training isn't fun, but it's really worth it. In Birthright, it's actually not that bad, because Birthright gives you the maps uh, Leo's Chapter and Fort Dragonfall, which are full of Faceless, which you can just use the effective Spirit Katana on, which can kind of just make him very easily win around them and get to promoted level 5 pretty quickly. It probably Those two maps probably won't get you all the way to promoted level 5, but they can get you pretty close and you only need like one more chapter after that or like a paralogue to get to soul. And at that point you can just reclass out of mercenary and be in a good class. The faceless EXP is probably falling around off, falling off around what level? 23 or 24 internal yeah so 
Not quite to soul, but I guess close enough to just go do a paralogue. And there are also uh, faceless paralogues. In Hisame's paralogue and Rajat's paralogue, there are faceless that spawn for a very long time. I think Rajat's paralogues faceless are infinite if you don't take the dragon veins out in time. So if you are willing to spend some time in those chapters to really accelerate your experience gain, you can get soul very early because paralogue experience is going to be a lot further ahead birthright's level curve than your regular chapter experience just because it follows conquest's level curve and not birthright's a lot slower level curve and also birthright paralogs don't do internal levels for promoted enemies so they are always 20 and 1 which makes them massive exp max yes if you really want to go to a wacky build there are other skills that you can get for the mercenary class line. Axe Breaker is pretty useful because he will probably want to be using long term a dagger which is going to be weapon triangle weak to axes so having the extra avoid and hit on the axes is kind of useful although whether or not it's worth spending the extra 4,000 gold to get into Hero for level 15 is pretty arguable. Yeah, Axe Breaker is really good and there are a lot of Breakers in late game. Yeah. Birth, right? Especially because while his melee weapon ranks are great, his ranged weapon ranks aren't the best. I mean, they're all E, essentially. So yeah. if you've got him in something like a dagger class, it's going to be hard to get him to, like, dual shuriken rank. So Axebreaker would help a lot against those, like, late-game berserkers. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if you've spent your, like, paralogs, like, you've done one of the faceless paralogs and gotten him to soul, then you've already spent it, so you can't, like, use it again to get him to Axebreaker. Yeah. So it, it's not super great to get. He does also have access to Bow Knights, which gives him access to Rally Skill, which might be useful in some cases, although if you're using him as a support unit, you probably want him to be using Shelter and not Rally Skill for his action. So the utility of that is kind of debatable. But he does have access to Shuriken Breaker, which is also pretty useless in the game of Birthright just because there's only really a small handful of maids in the late game chapters for you to worry about with the shurikens. Yeah, it, it'd be good if you could get it in like chapter 10, but it, it's not yeah. going to do anything for you late game. Um, what's probably more relevant about his Bonite access is that he does pass it to his daughter, Sophie. Yes. Um, and like you said before, Hinoka is one of his better spouse options. And so then you're passing rally speed and rally skill. Yes. Too. But Sophie can just pick up rally skill or soul. It's just about him passing mercenary to her. And the nice thing about Silas having his base class be Cavalier is that whoever he marries or gives friendship to will also get access to the Cavalier class, which allows you to get even more shelter users and even more units with plus three damage from Elbow Room. You can get a lot of shelter units out of him because his wife will get shelter. Then uh, technically he can have three friends, but really it's only one of them and the yeah. one that you're going to be befriending him with is not going to be using shelter. Yeah. But you can pass shelter around to quite a few people and get a ton of value out of it because the more shelter users you have, the better it gets. Yes. Since you can just keep sheltering Azura. And he does also have access to three classes through friendship. He has Troubadour from Jacob, Ninja from Kaze, and Samurai from Ryoma. Now, if you play Conquest or have watched a lot of Zorn's videos, you will know that Ninja is probably the best of these classes. But first, what do you think about Troubadour? Uh, I think... <laughs> so... I, I, I'm a big advocate of using Troubadour in Conquest as essentially scuffed ninja, but this is Birthright where you have a million ninjas, Yeah. so there's not much use for it in that regard, so I, I don't really see the point. I guess it is a rally, another rally that he can pass down to Sophie, that's yeah. something, but it, no, it's not worth it. Butler isn't that much worse than Master Ninja. It's it's like four points slower, and otherwise it's basically identical. Oh um, god. But for Silas, that speed is is kind of a concern. Yeah. 
So you probably want to be going into Master Ninja with Silas. Oh, it's only three points slower, actually. Okay. But minus three speed, minus four res is not to play on a ninja. Yeah. Troubadour isn't the worst thing you can do to Silas, just because he still does have access to daggers in Butler. He does get res plus two to shore up that deficiency compared to Master Ninja. He does get Jean Diome, which can sometimes be useful if you're like having two units next to each other in late game birthright maps that are going to be taking on a huge group of enemies but you probably don't care about the rest of the skills and butler is still probably worse for silas than master ninja yeah it's overall just a, a weaker master ninja um yeah. when master ninja's right there it's a pretty hard sell yeah i guess if you didn't get master ninja uh before kaze's unfortunate uh, incident then it's still an option but i wouldn't recommend it in my previous kaze video we always mentioned that Silas is one of the most important units that you want to be building supports with Kaze just because Silas benefits so much from the Master Ninja class. It gives Silas access to daggers, which is the best physical weapon type in the game, which allows him to leverage his very high attack stats and skill stacking in order to have a very high effective attack in Birthright's late game, which is very nice. Master Ninja Silas becomes one of the most competent combat units you can just possibly have. Um, yeah. His bulk is huge, his offense is huge, and then Ninja fixes his speed and gives him 1-2 range, and the 1-2 range interactions with Soul are ridiculous. Yeah. He probably doesn't care very much about the skills that you'll be getting from the Ninja class line. Lock Touch, I guess you could use him to unlock the Chapter 25 chests. Yeah, the, the ninja skills don't matter, it's the Merc and Cav skills that he needs. His ability to have soul in a dagger wielding class is probably his biggest boon in the game of Birthrights, just because he's the only unit with good defense that has access to that skill, because the other one is Felicia, who is not going to be one of your most defensive units to survive the massive swarms of enemies that are going to be coming at you in late game Birthrights. Yeah, so pretty much the only options for getting soul on a competent dagger unit are Silas or Sophie, yeah. and that's it. And you can get it to Jacob through Felicia Marriage, technically. Yeah, but even then, Jacob's physical stats aren't anywhere near Silas's. Yeah, and eventually at level 15 Master Ninja, he will have access to Shuriken Fair, which is just a flat plus 5 damage to everything that he's going to be doing, which is going to be very nice. Yeah, that takes his total damage stack to plus 14, so, yes. you know. And if he wants to spend an extra two levels in Mechanist by a level 15, he will get access to Replicate, which will allow him to get a bit of extra utility doing, like, Replicate shelter shenanigans, maybe doing stuff like player phase, enemy phase, weapon switching, but he'll be just fine if he stays in Master Ninja. Yeah, Replicate has a lot of applications. Um, like you said, you can essentially have two shelter users. Yeah. You can also do things where you can send him forward and then leave the replica behind and rally the replica. Yes. Uh, and heal the replica so that your, essentially your support units can help him while he's far away from them. There's a lot of little things you can do with it, but getting promoted level 15 skills is hard to begin with. Um, yeah. And so it, it doesn't feel worth it. And Silas being a unit in the Cavalier class line with Shelter is useful in the context of a replica unit because Azura's Inspiring Song stat boosts also carry over to the replica. And since he is a Shelter user, he's more likely to be sung to than most of your other units. So that's something to keep in mind. But he will yeah. still just be fine if he stays Master Ninja for the entire late game. Yeah, like it would it would definitely make him stronger, but it's like I can't imagine anything remotely threatening a fully trained Master Ninja Silas to the point where it's like you don't really need to make him stronger. And his final friendship class is Samurai, which is very useful for one skill in particular, which is Vantage. Now, if you thought Silas wasn't unkillable enough, Vantage just brings that even further. When he's at low HP, below 50%, he will attack first on enemy phase. 
for his first hits, which if you are three-shotting enemies is extremely important in this game because after the first enemy phase, Silas is probably going to be bruised up a bit. But if you have advantage, if they at all have a chance of killing you in two hits, Silas can just get his third hit in before those enemies can hit him back and he will have survived when otherwise he would have died. Yeah, it's probably not quite as huge on Silas as it is yeah. on a lot of Master Ninjas because his attack stat is just so huge to begin with. The scenario where he leaves a bunch of enemies alive isn't quite as often. But you know, sometimes you, you need to use a lower might weapon and there's a great knight or a general or something that you can't quite punch through and it's it's still nice. Um, yeah. And then it does also come with Astra, which is another defensive proc, because if you Astra, you just instantly have a full guard gauge, and the next yes. attack is negated. I should note that there are quite a few instances where Silas will not always be one-shotting enemies. I know there are a lot of, like, Wyvern Lords and Berserkers with massive HP stats that Dagger classes can often struggle with uh, reaching one-round thresholds without full supports. So... Having Vantage is going to yeah, still be useful. It's still pretty big. It's just not quite as big as it would be for someone else. But yeah, it's still like, it's a great skill. Even if you are two-shotting, it's still great in conjunction with Soul and Astra because it can potentially bail you out if you get unlucky. Yeah. It, it's definitely the best defensive skill. Um, it's fantastic. The only issue is getting it does become a little awkward in conjunction with Ninja because they are both friendship. And getting access to Vantage and Ninja both through Friendship is impossible because you're only limited to one A-plus support per character. Right. Kaze and Ryoma can both A-plus him, but he can't A-plus both of them. Yes. So he's forced to choose to get one via Friendship and one via Marriage, which does make it a little awkward because his um, Han is pretty convenient, but Kagero not quite as much. Yeah. From Master of Arms, he gets Seal Strength, which, again, if you are Silas and you are probably either one-rounding or three-shotting enemies, Seal Strength is a lot less useful because by the time they have the chance to hit you on the second enemy phase, they will probably already be dead. Yeah, they'll all either already be dead or he's just gonna vantage kill and finish them off, so it, it yeah. does not matter. And Life and Death is probably not going to be a skill that you want on a dagger using class in late game birthrights because reaching one shot thresholds is going to be extremely difficult even with the big skill stack that silas has yeah he's he's not getting to one shot with daggers you could maybe try something with like a Giga Forge kodachi but i doubt that would be any good um and so in the end life and death is gonna cause you to Take 10 more damage, and if you soul proc, you heal 5, and congrats, you just took 5 more damage for no reason. And Silas is so strong, he, he does not need the plus 10. He can probably hit 3 hit KOs on literally everything without it, and 2 hit KOs on most things. And he does technically have access to Sword Fair, but it's not super useful just because Birthright doesn't have brave weapons that you'd be using with the fair skills. So, your mileage. Yeah, I, I don't really see what Silas is going to do with Sword Fair. It, it doesn't seem that useful. Like yeah. I said, the only thing I can possibly think of is trying something with a Super Kodachi Forge, and that just seems bad. Yeah. You want to move on to marriage classes? Yeah, let's probably talk about the marriage, because that's pretty relevant. So, Silas is pretty good in that he has access to samurai and ninja through both friendship and marriage. So he doesn't have to choose between having access to daggers and vantage. He can always have both, which is very nice. Yeah, easiest way to do that is definitely marry Hana and friendship Kaze. But you, yeah. you could technically friendship Ryoma and marry Kakuro if you wanted to. It's just more flexibility. But Considering his other options, if he chooses to marry uh, Sky Knights, it's not the worst option for him, but it's probably one of the better options for the Sky Knights because they do appreciate the Cavalier's ability to have Elbow Room for plus three damage dealt and Shelter because having extra eight movement flyers with Shelter is usually not going to be a bad thing. 
Yeah, it, it's really good for, for Hinoka. Oh, I guess Setsuna also counts as an 8-move flyer, if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't help him much, but it's still a speed pair-up, which is yeah. what he really does want for quite a while. So it's it's not the worst option. It's still helping him short-term. It's just not giving him long-term, but it's, it's helping them long-term. Yeah. So it's still a really good option. Besides Hana, Kagero, and Hinoka... I, I can't really see any of the marriage sets doing much for him, though. Again, he's going to be doing most of his damage on enemy phase, so having the extra plus four damage from quick draw from the archer class line probably isn't going to help him very much, and it's not like he's going to be using bows very much anyways, or ending his turn super close to other units so that Amaterasu will be super significant. Yeah, I mean, the most significant skill I can see here from anything else is probably air superiority, because there are a lot of wyvern lords. Yes, yeah. Uh, and even that's just not worth it. Yeah. Spending way too long in a class lock to lances and bows in mid-game birthrights is not ideal. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. At least he's got the lance rank for it, so yeah. better on him than most people, but it, it's not, not a good option. If you really want to sustain Sack, Monk can be a funny meme option because it has access to Miracle and Renewal. <laughs> if you really want to make sure that Silas has as low of a chance of dying as possible, Miracle can help him survive a lethal hit in the event that he gets really unlucky with Soul Prox and you haven't done the math beforehand. And Renewal just gives him a flat plus 30% healing every single turn. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly sounds funny. Um, and I suppose the Great Master Silas training wouldn't be that bad. You'd still just beast killer stuff. Yeah. So it, it, it's silly. You could do it. It does give you Rally Lock, the actual best skill in the game. Ooh, although whether or not you want Silas to be the one doing your rally is uh, arguable. <laughs> All right, you pass it down to Sophie. Yeah, he does actually have a surprising amount of rally access. Yeah. So, and while it's not huge for him, I've got it up a couple of times, it does give you a pretty cheap rally bot engine too, which is, it's nice. Uh, you probably don't want to be getting Quixotic on Silas just because he is going to be a Master Ninja and his avoid rates are actually going to be pretty good. So having minus 30 avoid from Quixotic is generally not going to be ideal in Birthrights. Yeah, um, his personal skill stat is also really good. Um, skill is his best personal snap, his best personal growth, I mean, uh, in terms of base, his strength becomes are a little better. Yeah. Um, but then he's going to be in Master Ninja, which is using curves, which are hyper accurate to begin with. Yeah. And it gets a five hit bonus. So like, if he is having accuracy issues, it's in like the 85 plus range. Yeah. Which, given that he's soul tanking, you probably don't want to cut his avoid for that little hit. Because even if he does miss, he'll just vantage the next turn. Yeah. And Rend Heaven, I guess, is funny, but he probably doesn't need very much help to get to three shot thresholds in the first place. So it's not the biggest issue. Although, if you are marrying Orochi, that means you're not marrying Hana for vantage access. So it might be useful in that case. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, if your choices are the skill that guarantees the kill or the one yeah. that's a proc to do it, I think I'm going to yeah. take vantage every time. Oh, yeah. So. And then, of course, Cavalier Orochi sounds like <laughs> the worst thing you could be doing. It does still have shelter, so not the worst thing you could be doing with Orochi. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's true. If you want to marry him to Rinka, I guess he does appreciate the extra strength and defense most units do if they're physical, but... He doesn't really gain that much from Oni Savage. I guess Salvage Blow can be a funny thing to get you extra weapons for forging. Yeah, it, it's funny, I guess, but it, it's not great. And even then, Brinka pair up is probably worse on him than quite a lot of other physical units because yeah. she only gives two speed at S, which is he'd much rather like four speed than four strength. Yeah. Again, in Spear Fighter, she probably doesn't need any of the seal skills, and Lance Fair is probably not going to be the weapon of choice that he's going to be in the late game. Yeah, Lance Fair isn't doing anything. So yeah, Samurai and Ninja are probably going to be the classes that he wants to get through Friendship and Marriage. Right, yeah, and 
swap and shove just aren't really doing anything because he has a much better positional skill to yes. start with. So generally, Silas really wants to get friendship from Kaze and marriage from Hana, just because they are the most convenient supports to start building immediately, because Hana and Kaze can both start building supports in Chapter 7, while Kagero and Ryoma join much later. Yeah, and in Chapters 7 and 8, his base speed is not good, so speed pair-ups are what he needs to get, yes. like, one, to get one rounding things, and Kaze yeah. and Hana both provide that. And I should also note that it is possible to continue to use his friendship seals on a dead Kaze after Chapter 15. So he will not lose access to the ninja class line even after Kaze dies. So you can reclass at your leisure, wait until your late game paralogs in order to reclass into hero and then to master ninja, so that you can free up the support building room for your other units by that time. Right, yeah, he just gets to go 19 Kimbalier, 5 hero, and then master yeah. ninja no matter what. And then at some point you dip into probably sword master, I guess, for Vantage Astra, and then go back to ninja and you're done. I also know that a lot of people like to do Hinoka marriage just because Hinoka, if you want to use her as a carry, she does appreciate the extra defense from Great Knights, and she does appreciate the extra attack from Elba Room. but Hinoka probably would rather be in a dagger class to begin with just because they give her better 1-2 range, and if she's in Great Knight, she's locked to using the Bolt Naginata for 1-2 range, which her magic stats is very lacking, so probably not the best thing you can be doing with Hinoka. Although the extra yeah. shelter user with eight movement flights is useful in paralogs, especially. You can technically get daggers on Hinoka yeah. uh, without marriage, but made Hinoka with elbow room doesn't sound like the best carry. Yeah. So if you want to be using Silas as your primary laking carry, how does he compare to your others? The probably standard low effort carry that you're going to be comparing to in Birthright will always be Saizo, who you can just raise to level 5 Master Ninja, and he'll probably be able to be one of your carries for the rest of the game. Silas compares very favorably to Saizo, having an extra 6 attack at level 5 Master Ninja, the same speed, 9 less hit, 2 less avoid, 3 less crit, 1 less dodge, but thanks to Vow of Friendship, he has 2 more defense and 2 more resistance, which really helps him in addition to soul for his sustain. Yeah, it's a comparison that looks really, really good. His attack lead really does help offset the difference between Saizo having vantage. He, he just looks fantastic here. The main issue is definitely getting him here is a lot more work than it was to get Saizo here. But if you just look at the stat comparisons, you'd probably pick Silas over Saizo if you yeah. just could get either of them for free. And when it comes to actually getting the experience, I think Silas being a lance user for his existence in chapters 14 and 15 with all the horses and the wolf skin, give him a bit of an easier time reaching level 20 as a cavalier than Saizo will have as a ninja, just because of how easy it is to just send him into those groups of enemies, gain all the experience, and not have to care for a while, while Saizo will still have to, like, continue being deployed in your team for longer in order to get to level 20. Yeah, there's no uh, hunter's knife for Saizo to just do the same thing, so he's yeah. forced to figure out some other way to kill them, probably just three-shotting and then vantaging. Um, yeah. Whereas Silas can just run around with the Beast Killer and just get the XP that way, but it is still a notable gold investment, and then uh, his weapon ranks still end up considerably worse. But yeah, it's a really favorable comparison. Like, yeah. he's clearly one of the best combat units you can have. Yeah, the plus nine damage stack of Valve Friendship, Elbow Room, and Stronger Post is just so big for him. It really helps offset the lack of weapon rank that he'll have compared to Saizo. Yeah, and just having the attack naturally is better than getting your attack from weapon rank. Um, yeah. Because Saizo is getting two points of attack from weapon rank, but occasionally gets cancelled. Silas's damage is always there. And 
Silas is so good that he even compares pretty favorably against Ryoma, I'd say. Compared to base Ryoma, Silas being a level 5 Master Ninja, Ryoma being a level 4 Swordmaster, Silas has one less attack, the same speed, 20 more hits, 17 less avoid, 17 less crit, 3 more dodge, 4 more defense, and 4 more resistance in addition to having soul, which will significantly help his survivability compared to Ryoma. So Silas is looking pretty good. Of course, by the time you get Silas at this point, Ryoma will probably be a significantly higher level, but once you get later into the game, the levels are going to even out a bit, so comparing them isn't the most unfair thing to do. Yeah, his avoid lead isn't quite as big as it looks, because in this instance, Ryoma's vantage is doing quite a bit for him. Not only is it letting Ryoma do those three shots, it's also giving him an additional chance to crit, and once he gets one more level, it gives him an additional chance to master enemies. Yes. So that helps offset the difference that Silas has with Soul. It doesn't quite make up for it, because Astra's proc rate is so much lower than Soul's, yeah. um, and Ryoma's skill is actually substantially lower than Silas's, so Ryoma's looking at, what, a 9% Astra rate versus Silas's 25% Soul? Yes. Um, but it does help Ryoma in this comparison. But it's pretty insane that we have to be looking at things that help Ryoma in comparison to another combat unit. Yeah. Silas is just very good. Most of your Birthright playthroughs are probably going to be deploying Silas for most maps just because of Shelter, and the fact that he can become one of your best combat units on top of that just puts the icing on the cake. He is one of the best units in Birthrights. Uh, you could even make an argument that he's better than Ryoma. Yeah. It really does just come down to how much you value like the work that you need to put in. Because this is yeah. building two supports, training a unit from level starting level seven or is it six? It's a good, you know, twenty-ish levels and yeah. some weapon rank work and quite a bit of reclassing and then two support chains to build. But once you do that, he just looks functionally like a bulkier Ryoma. Yes. And then even if you're not willing to put in that work he's still, he has the best movement options in the game because yeah. he has shelter, which is so good. He's just, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you look at him with no investment, he's one of the best units in the game. And if you look at him with all the investment you want to give him, he's still one of the best units in the game. Yep. He's just a really fantastic unit. Um, he is one of the few units who just shows up and is consistently good no matter what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very impressive. He's one of the best units in Birthrights, just like he's one of the best units in Conquest. It is amazing how consistently good he is throughout all routes in this game. Yeah, he's just fantastic. And I guess it is worth mentioning he also gives Cavalier to Ryoma, which yes. yeah. is another <laughs> amazing option. Thanks for being on this call. Is there anything that you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I have a I have a YouTube channel. I just post silly stuff to it sometimes, but go check it out. Um, it's uh, Septastar on YouTube. So if you want to check me out, please do. I don't usually do stuff like this that's more analytical. I just post silly stuff. But if you're into that, uh, come check me out, please. Thank you.